So this is the project we are looking at, uh, zero time. Zero times one five file input and input and output. So we are just going to quickly look through and we jump right as I prepare some document for this file, we jump into it to look at the document and how they relate to this. I'll give basic explanation about um, this subject, this concept of file handling in C, how you can handle file in this project. All right, guys, welcome to this um, video. We are going to look at today file handling in C, how you can handle files in the C programming language. Before we will dive right um, to start working, we have to understand some concepts. All right, so I prepared a document for us to look at on this concept. So file handling in C. So we want to know what file handling is and how you can go about it in your project. So what is file, file handling in the first place? File handling uh, refers to the process of working with files in C programming language and it involves um, you want to perform various operations such as you want to create a file, you want to open, you want to read content from a file, then you want to write into a file and after all said and done, you want to close that file. So this is uh, the basic features of how you handle files in C. And these are declared in the standard imputable.hedder file. There are others, but basically this is what it is. And there are steps to processing a file. So these are uh, a few of them. Uh, these are the steps that are aligned below. First, you have to declare a file pointer variable. And after that, you have to open you open a file using um, the fopen function then you process the file using appropriate function for processing i'm talking about this after you open the file using fopen then you have to go about processing the file using uh, appropriate function there are a lot of them we we'll look at them shortly then when you are done then you have to go ahead and close the file using the f close function so these are the basic steps you have to you want to look at where you are to, uh, want to handle files in c so the general settings to open a file um, you have the file then you have um, this pointer variable here that is, is declared then after that um you use the f open function and the file name as well as the mode when we are talking about mode here we are talking about um you can have the the create mode the uh truncate append um read only um write only and the rest of them so that is basically what how you the general sequence to open opening a file so after that uh, we can go ahead to talk about the standard streams all right so we are looking at um, standard streams So what, what is standard stream as applies to what we are looking at today? Standard streams uh, is a process refers to a default input and output channel associated with running a program. So the input and output, the uh, input and output channel that is associated with running a program. So they, 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 they are standard input, which is denoted by the STDI in standard input then you have the 
talk about the standard output, which is denoted by STD out, standard output. Then we lastly want to look at standard error, which is um, have a form of resemblance to this, but have its own unique difference. So what is standard input? Is the stream, uh, the stream provide a way for program to receive input, more like um, the system asking you to type something. If you are working on your computer and the computer want to accept input, that is what we call standard input. By then, the console is going to be blinking, asking you to type something. That is uh, basically what we mean by standard input and uh, uh, receive input from the user or from another program. Key keyboard is basically uh, used the means for um, imputing commands into the system. So more like you have a, a prompt that is blinking, just like you have here now. You look closely, you see this cursor. That is an example of standard input that's blinking here. And see, that is an example of um, standard input uh, from user. So input functions like you have some functions that are used like scanf and fget read data from the um, standard input, which is std in. You have scanf and fget. Then you have to we'll talk about the standard output, which is denoted by std out, and it's typically associated with the console or terminal. More like uh, what is printed out for others to see right and output functions like the printer function the puts put function and uh, you can have others such as put c put car function uh, write data to standard output output is displayed on the screen so once you write to standard it's going to be shown on the computer screen so that is standard output so I talked about standard error, which I said is kind of had some form of bearing with standard output. So what, what is that? It outputs error messages on the console using functions like fprinter and or p error function. So it outputs error. So unlike standard output, Standard error is typically on buffered. What does that mean? It means that output is immediately displayed instead of being stored in a buffer. So standard error display output immediately as the output, the error message is um is you 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 come across that error message going to display it immediately on the screen without being buffered. So it's not going to be transferred uh it's not going to be stored somewhere waiting for it to be kind of output out yeah it's just going to you know print out immediately so basically that is um the difference between standard output and standard error so um i have one more document here i'll have to open that Okay. So yeah, so we have to look at these two, which uh, basically there are functions which we want to use when we are talking about this. So one of them is f open function, which is used to open a file. Then you have the get c to read a character from a file. Then you have the put C, which writes a character into a file. You have get W, read integer from a file. Um, you have put W, we write an integer into a file. You have F close to close a file, basically. And F print F, print formatted output into a file. Then F scan F, read formatted input from a file. That means uh, input are read from a file. Or like a prompt is expected um you have to impute something into the file we have mpref write a string from a file 
have get which read a string basically from a file then you have uh, f e o f we detect end of file marker all right this detect end of file marker so basically these are some functions though there are others these are ba some basic functions we have to look at uh when we are looking at um file input output so uh basically this is it and let's jump right to look at the code so to start with we go ahead and create a readme.md file which is the first requirement for this project so first uh i'll just go ahead to get a terminal get a sandbox all right so um this i'm going to restore this down okay so here now so i'll go ahead and do cd root all right so be sure i'm in the root directory so i'll go ahead and ls into a cd into the low level programming repo so this is it i'll pick it up from here just go ahead and copy it and i'll do cd into that okay so then we go ahead to create this directory zero times one five file underscore i o so i'll copy it and the command is mkdir to make directory so i'll go ahead and put that in so if i do it in Uno, it cannot be because it already exists all right that directory exists so since it exists i'm going to, just going to go ahead to cd into it so if i try that okay. all right so that is it we have that directory and the first thing we are going to do right away is to create our readme.md file so um we are just going to do that vi readme.md so if i hit enter all right this is it you can make your you can you know put in the readme content it said readme you can do it to your test write the content you want to put in the readme.md file so once you are done you could just go ahead and escape to long wq so um, after that then we go ahead and create our main.h main.h file which um, we house the prototype that we are giving so the prototypes we are giving for this first one this is it this is the prototype all right this um pucha underscore pucha prototype which you have the underscore pucha there then this is the first one i showed just now that's it and you could look at the other ones all right i already showed that okay this is the second one or the third one prototype so that that is it these prototypes are be given here in the questions so you just do where to pick them up and use them in the readme.md file so this is it okay so this prototype we are giving so this i'm going to explain this when we start creating the first file why we have to include this header files i'm going to explain that so the prototype we are giving so you just pick them up from there and you use them in the file so once you are done you escape colon wq save it and quit so that is uh, the we have done the readme and the main dot h so the we will not jump right to start creating the first file 
Okay, so we write, we start with this first one, and we are writing a function that read the text file and print it to the function standard output. That is the standard output. Then this is the prototype. Like we said earlier, this prototype has been given for each of them, each of the questions. So we are where letter is the number of letters you should read and print, return the actual number of letters you can read and print, and if the file not open, so go through this. If file name is not return zero, write. If write failure does not write the expected amount of byte, return zero. So that is what. So we just pick the file name from here, which is zero read read underscore test file dot c. So I had to copy that and I'll come here I'll, to create that file VI and I paste that. Okay. So if I hit enter, so this is the file. Let me extend this a bit so that you can see what's happening. Yeah, this is the file opened. So I'll go ahead and explain what we have here that you understand why we have what we have first these are the header files that have been included in this um file these are the header files the first one made.h which carries all our prototypes this is the one for this very file and other files have their own prototype they are included in main.h file then we have the unistd.h header file, and as you know, it contains various constants and functions declaration. Talking about unistd.h, functional declaration related to the POSIX operating system API. So we is used for file input output process management, and because we are using the read and write function, we have to include this. If you look through our program, so you see read and write used, that function you is used. So before we can use that, we have to include the unistd.h um, header file. Then we have the um, we are we included the system slash type.h header file. So that defines various data types used in system calls, including size, which we use as size s size underscore t. And what does do is use as return type for some function calls that return sizes. So it you should also know that this is signed. This is signed. It means that it can return both positive and negative numbers. So we also use this uh, system slash. We also included system slash stat dot h. Though the, the, that that defines functions working with phi. Uh, status and metadata though that is not used exactly used in this uh, very file all right this particular one that was not used but for standard and ref we had to put that hopefully we had we use that in other files then we have we included the function one dot h header file and as you know it provides symbolic constant for various file control operations and flags and we use that because we we use the open function. We included that header file because we used the open function, okay, somewhere in the program, okay, like yeah, as you see here, we use that open function. That is why we included functions one dot h header file. So then we are also included this, the std live dot h, uh, and it provides uh, in the include memory location function such as so we use malloc i think we use malloc in this uh, file uh yes we yes we use malloc here so we have to include the std live so i have to go through that so you understand why we un included this header file so um after that we have our you know our comment section which is betty compliance and follow betty documentation style then we this is our prototype all right this is our prototype so um size like i said earlier size s size underscore t is a signed integer all right is a part of it belongs to the family of signed integer type 
used for various input output functions indicating sizes or count so a sign it means it can take both positive and negative number so the function take two parameters this function read underscore test does five take two parameters which are the file name and letters okay the file name is a pointer to a string this is a pointer to a string containing the name of the file to read so you can see it's a pointer yeah there's a, an asterisk sign here is a pointer to a string containing the name of the file to read and letters the number of letters to read to to read and print so this is telling us the number of letters to be read and printed so we declared some in some variables right so variables we have declared here we have the 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 file underscore d variable which provide the file descriptor to identify the open file so this it help provide file descriptor to identify the open file then after that we declared um two variables here which will return this um this s size underscore t which i told you earlier that is a signed integer type and that is the length these these variables we indicate the length of data read from the file and sorry yeah this this one this first one declared the indicates the length of data read why this indicates the length of data written to the standard output understand this one is length of data read this one length of data written to the standard output then we have the buffer which is um, a dynamically allocated character buffer to temporarily store the file content so this temporarily store the file correct uh, content and it's going to return a character data type so that is um what you have to know about that so uh, first we have to understand what in summary what this code is going to do is going to in summary um this code is defines a function that reads the specified number of characters from a test file like i said earlier a function that reads the specified number of characters from a test file write them to the standard output it reads file uh, content of a file write them to the standard output and return the number of characters successfully written so i believe just to have that at the back of your mind as we um, look through it so if here we are saying if file name is exactly none return zero so if it is none return zero and file underscore this equals to open what this means we are saying that we are specified that the file should be opened in read only mode right so this specify that the file should be opened in read only mode so if open return minus one return zero that means it indicates an error in opening the file and the function returns zero then we go on to allocate memory memory allocation for the buffer so uh we allocate memory using malloc function to allocate memory size of kaka is one multiplied by the number of letters we want to uh based on the number of letters specified so if memory allocation fails then close the file close this file and return zero so then uh, we read data from the file to do that we use this variable length read to read data from the file so we are reading using the read function and we read the data from the file we read up letters character from the open descriptor and file that's called d into the buffer so we read that into the buffer and after doing that we we close the file using the close function and if length underscore the length arrow is exactly minus one we free the buffer so basically that is what uh so after freeing the buffer the we are we then write the content we write it to the standard output so we printed out there we free the buffer again and if uh, write is is not is if the length of write is not exactly the length of, uh, the the read length is not exactly the written length then return length so so we write 
we write the write the raw data to standard output like we did this is what this indicate then we free the buffer and if length red become buffer if let uh, the length of data read from the file and written length are the same they hold the same number of characters that means the operation was successful then we return zero shows that the the operation was successful then we return the length of the written um, characters all right return that so we free the buffer and so that is it for this so i i believe you understand the explanation so i will escape column wq save and quit so that is it for that um, file we have successfully created that so after that we move to create the next one which is this create a function that creates a file so that is what we are going to look at now that create a file so you take into cognizance all of this all of that so let me we have to let me pick up the file name so we come here and do vi all right so this is it and what we want to do here first okay we have the we are including the main.h header file so and that is this is the this is the comment section and this is the prototype for this function and the function name is to create we are creating a file with this function name so in summary what this uh, particular uh, file what we are trying to achieve here we are trying to to create a new file with a given name and write the provided test content into it so at the end of the day if it returns one that means the operation was successful but if it return minus one it means that it failed so if minus one is returned it failed and if one is returned at the end of the day it shows that the operation was what we are trying to achieve that is creating a new file with a name and writing the test content into it was successful so just understand that on one hand so that we what we did here we we declared these variables file that's called d n letters and arrow w arrow which are to return integer data types all of them will return integer data type so we come here to say that if file name is a, is not if not file name that means if what we are trying what we are looking at is not file name or if file name is not provided return minus one then we come here I'm here now so what we create we come here and we create a new file we create uh, we we open this file and we go ahead to create a new file if that file doesn't exist using this o underscore create okay i believe you are following so we create it if it doesn't exist and then we truncate it to remove any any existing content if there were any existing content in that file we truncate it to remove them and we set the file permission to ensure that only the file owner can read and write into it no other person can read and write or execute the file only the file owner have the permission to read and write into the file so just that is what 
um, that is and if the file opening fails then minus one is returned and if not test um content if no test content was provided if there was no content or test provided then what this shows that we set test content to an empty string it shows that we did not provide content for it and we set test content to an empty what an empty string so then uh, for this we try to calculate the length of the test content by counting how many characters it it contain all right and we increment it trying to uh, uh, the test content the number of characters it, it contain and at the end of the day the number of characters is stored in this variable it's written is stored here all right it's written into this variable stored here and if um this variable name this variable rw is exactly one then it shows that um it was not successful we returned um minus one so after that write after we successfully written the test content into here then we close the file name file underscore d is closed and using the close um, this close function and we return one indicating that that operation was successful so that is what um, this does so in summary the code create a new file with a given name and write provided test content into it so that is what is happening here so that's the explanation i believe that you grab that so i'll write and quit save and quit and let's create the next file so vi this is it write write a function that append tests at the end of a file so you take it to cognizant all of these prototype uh, all of these instructions here okay so i will not have to repeat that and what we are trying to do is to do this. This is the file name. So I'll pick it up from here. VI. Uh, if I paste that. All right. So if I hit enter. So this is it. This is what uh, we want to do. We want to append test to a file. We want to append test to a file. So that is it. Append test to end of a file. Uh, this file name test content is the append test to test to file is the function name and these are the uh, arguments to this function appropriately set in the prototype and we declared some variables here the first one is the file underscore d and n letters all and row all of them to return integer data type and if i if not file that if a uh, file name is not provided return minus one it shows that just return minus one error indicate an error so and um, if i d so so we open we use the open function to open this file underscore d all right we open that file and it check if the file name is provided if the file name exists if it does not exist then return minus one to show that an error occurs but if it exists they go ahead and execute this and append um, the content into that so that flag this flag or append is used to open the file for writing and position the right pointer at the end of the file so by that append means we are writing we are trying to attach or add the file content at the end of the file so after we check if the file uh, content is pro if the the file name is provided then it calculates the length of the content using this the n letters variable that we declared 
So when it checks how many uh, letters it uh, the how many characters are in the content using this, then we go ahead to use the write function here. So what are we doing? It writes the test content that the test content to to the open file. All right. So this is it. This file, the test content from here will now be written into the open what? Into the open file, effectively appending it to the end. That means it will be attached to the end. So if at any point the writing operation fails, then this uh, value arrow w arrow will be set to what? Minus one, which shows that the operation was not successful so at the end of the day we close the file and return uh, one to show that it was successful but if at this point it was not successful the uh, minus one is returned then we close the file using the close function and return one shows that operation was successful so this is it for this file and after that i believe this explanation we help you go a long way help you understand what we did here so we pull on wq and we exit so after that all right so let's first check okay i know your answers let's do local check for this first one for this particular one i could have done for others but let's just go ahead to show that what you did actually was correct so you let's use this test file so i'll go ahead let me pick this copy before we move to the next one i'll quickly show you that di2 main dot c all right so after you do that just pick copy this test content this is a test file so copy this up to this point and you come here and put it into the file all right so after doing that do escape colon wq so what i'm trying to do now i'll go ahead and pick this all right so i'll come here and this Okay, so after doing that, I will again pick this. So let me rather use, okay, I'll use this GCC code, sorry about that. So I'll pick this GCC code up to this point. All right, just follow this just to test. There are test files provided for the ones we did before. I just want to use this to show you what is happening. So I'll paste that GCC code. And what we are, I'm trying to test right now, if I paste that and I uh, paste this again, it's going to print this. If it returns this, it shows that it was successful, right? So i'll hit enter all right so again i'll come here and i'll do this i'll copy this and i'll come here and paste that all right you see it came up with this greater than sign all right so it's telling me to impute that so if I enter that cell, uh, that I hit enter, you see it returned this one. So that means that we did the right thing. So you can test, you can check, um, you can test the other files, the ones here. Once we'll be doing using um, some of these um, test files to show that okay you are doing the right thing. So 
we just continue we move to the next one so what we are trying to do now the next one is we are trying to copy yeah write write a program that copies the content of a file to another file so that is what we want to do now so you take into cognizance all of this all of this and i'll just go ahead and pick the file name which is this c theory c theory.cp.c so i'll come here and do vi i'll paste that in all right so if i hit enter yep this is the content of this file let me expand this so that you see what is happening all right so basically uh, i have explained why we did when we included this in the first one we created the first file so we are just going to run down through this and we are going to explain to you what this code is doing So what is happening here is that the the code is trying to copy content of one file to another and the code defines a function check um it puts this function check stats all right that is used to check if a file name can be opened or closed so this is the uh, prototype and these are the arguments to this function okay so this the comment section so after that then we have another uh, function which is the main function the main function that have this argument c and argument b as parameters to this function so what is happening here is that inside the make function the following uh, we have like we said we have two arguments argument c and argument uh, uh, b so inside the main function the the variables are declared and initialized the first one we have sroc which is the source and we have um, another one which is dst dst so what this does, they are file descriptor for source and destination files. This for source file, this for destination file. Then we have another variable, which is what? End read. All of them are declared on this line. End read, which is a variable to track the number of bytes read. Okay, that's what end read does. And we have another variable, which is write. This is it right variable and a, a variable to track the number of bytes written this um track the number of bytes read and this right tracks the number of bytes written so we have another variable which is close um source close src on the source src and what that does is a variable to hold the return value of the close call okay then we have uh another variable which is mode and it's a byte max representative file permission okay i believe you understand file permission uh granting permission to the owner of the file other users and the etc so that is it so after declaring um this variable the program check if the command line count if the command line argument count argument c is not equal to theory so it check if argument c is not equal to theory if it is not it prints an error okay an error is printed indicating that the correct use it and exit with the status 97 all right so go ahead to open source using the open function in read only mode as you can see it opens that 
in read only more than assign the file descriptor to source to source here using argument v and it calls the check the check io starts function to check the status of the of of the open operation okay so it opens destination file argument uh it opens this file using the open function what mode it opens it in um right only mode then and initiate the file creation as well as um the file truncation mode and assign the file descriptor to this to the destination it calls the this function again the check io start function to check the the status it checks the status of the file so after that it enters um a loop using the while loop and data are read using the read function from the source file in um in a chunk of uh, 1024 so the loop continues um the end red is no longer equal to 134 and at the end of which indicates the end of file okay so after the the loop uh the loop the program attempt to close the source and destination file using the this close function come let me go down to show you that so it attempt to close using this close um function then cause the this because the check io starts again function and assign again to check the status of the close operation so the close the check io start function definition starts this function is responsible for handling the file the the file opening this is responsible for handling the opening and the closing of the file so you can see here then uh, closing the the destination the dst all right so um so that is that and after after that then we have another function here the check io uh, function definition start with all of these parameters included and what it does is that it check the mode of the file okay check the mode of the file and it is the start value returned um the the return value of the open and close or close here and the file descriptor fd and the file name and mode as arguments the one that we have declared here this and this and the mode as argument so depending on the mode here on the mode and start value it prints an appropriate error message using um, this the dprinter function print the error message to this uh, using standard error using the um, the print f function and exit the program with an exit code of 98 all right 98 or 99 all right so that is that is quite lengthy i understand that so you could as well you know check uh make research about this and uh, to understand better in summary uh we already told you what uh, we are trying to achieve in this particular file so let's skip colon wq so very lastly we are going to look at the last file here
which is this 100 ELF header dot C. So, and we look at what is happening in that file. So, what we are doing here is write a program that displays the information contained in the ELF. So, I will tell you uh, that executable and linkable format header at the start of an ELF file. So, uh, let me paste this. VI that. All right. So, this is it. Leave already explained this, and again we brought the prototypes here. Okay, so these are needed for this file to run, and you have the function which is Betty compliant and follow the Betty documentation style. So you know these functions here are declared in this file. So I'll just tell you what this does in summary, and that will be that. The the code is a uh, it, helps read like i said earlier we are, what we are trying to do the program is trying to display the information contained in the executable and linkable format elf and um header file so what that does it read and display the information from the elf executable and linkable format header of an elf file and the elf header is a crucial part of the elf file that contain metadata about the file structure organization and other important details so it helps it read and display the information from the executable and linkable format and we declared series of functions in the file i'll be a little fast so that it's becoming too long so yeah you could go through we use uh switch uh, cases we use the switch and case here all right so there is number of function there so you can look through that so in summary in summary what this particular code is doing is designed to read an executable and linkable format file and print various details from its header here from its header and it checks the integrity of the file, extracts important information, and print it out in a human readable format. If there's any error, the program executes, uh, it exits with a code of 98. So that is what is happening here. All right. So you can just um, look that up. So after all of this, I'll go ahead and do git add dot. I'll add everything. Then you can come here and do git commit minus m to use a commit message you can just say file input output all right you can use your commit message either way you hit enter it's going to come here i don't want to push a gear i've done that so you now after that you do your git what git push once you hit enter it's going to push all of that code and at the end of the day you can come back to check your code so the checks have been run here you can see they are all checked correctly see all of them they have been run they are they are checked correctly so they all check correctly so you can do the same just follow the format i showed you and we are going to get that all checked so thank you for watching and it's been a while i'll see you in the next video thank you for watching